Gears are essential for surviving in Reign of Giants, especially for summer. Fortunately, unlike vanilla, gears are much more common with the inclusion of multiple clockwork set pieces aside from the wooden thing set piece. This episode will focus on clockworks. Clockworks, also known as chess pieces, are rare aggressive mobs that can be difficult to farm, both due to their power and their rarity. I highly recommend not engaging them in combat unless you have an armor and weapon. They're tricky to defeat because of their awkward attack patterns and range, but will yield the highly desirable gears when killed. Note that even though gears are not flammable, killing a clockwork mob with fire will yield ash instead of gears, so you'll want to avoid burning them. Gears are used in two very important structures you need for summer, the ice box and the ice flingomatic. The ice box is a refrigerator that can preserve your food items, slowing down the spoiling process. This item is essential for summer because food spoils faster, and you can also store your thermal stone inside of it, chilling it to the lowest temperature so that you can carry it around to slow down overheating. Ice boxes require one gear to make. The Ice Flingomatic is an automated machine that throws snowballs at nearby burning, smoldering, or withered objects. Because objects randomly catch on fire in the summer, this machine is absolutely essential unless you want to spend the entire time putting out fires manually. The downside is that it requires fuel to upkeep. Ice Flingomatics require two gears to make. Clockwork Knights are normally found sleeping. When you get close to it, it'll stare at you for a few seconds and let out a battle cry before attempting to attack you. During its battle cry, you'll be able to hit it up to three times without being counterattacked. But, as usual, the safest way to fight an enemy is to wait for it to attack you before counterattacking. You can attack the Clockwork Knight twice in between its attacks. The Clockwork Knight is one of the few mobs that'll attempt to kite back during combat, which may cause your attacks to be delayed or even miss altogether due to the walking animation and attack delay. If this happens, you may find yourself vulnerable to taking damage. To remedy this, you'll need to time your attacks so they immediately land after the knight's attack ends. If you do miss, try to move away as fast as possible and reset the fight by waiting for its attack again, and then dodging it. Knights drop two gears when killed. Clockwork bishops are very tricky and almost impossible to kite due to their range and projectile speed. Like the knight, the bishop will be asleep until approached. If you remain near it for too long, it'll fire out a fast-traveling electric orb at your location. The keyword here is location. This means that it's possible to dodge, but can be difficult. The easiest and most efficient way to solo kill it is to face tank its attack with armor and beat it down with a powerful weapon like a tentacle spike. This is less effective with a spear or a tool because it can take up to twice the amount of hits to take it down. With the tentacle spike, you can kill it in 6 consecutive hits while only taking 1. While it is possible to kite it and take no damage, it's very difficult to do so without increased movement speed items, to the point where it no longer becomes worth it as you'll be sacrificing both offensive and defensive stats just for a chance to dodge it. This is one of the few mobs in the game I recommend tanking if you want to kill it. Bishops drop 2 gears and 1 purple gem. The Clockwork Rook can be your best friend or your worst enemy. The Rook attacks by sizing you up and then charging directly at you, destroying all things in its path, whether it be friend or foe. You can use this to your advantage at all stages of the game, but especially in the early game. The reason for this is because resources take time and tools to farm, but if you let the Rook do the farming for you, you'll save a lot of time and durability on your tools. The Rook won't always spawn next to resources that can be farmed. Additionally, it has a maximum leash range from its spawn point and will return there once it leaves the leash range, so it won't follow you forever. The Rook can also be used to fight for you by controlling its charge path. Note that if the mob damaged by the Rook is not a clockwork, it'll retaliate and attack the Rook. Because of how valuable the Rook is as a potential farming tool, it's in your best interest to protect it if possible. If you use the Rook to fight for you, keep in mind that it deals bonus damage to mobs. Using the Rook to kill its clockwork comrades can be easy. It takes a mere two charges to take them out, if you trust your skills as a bullfighter. If you do want to kill the Rook, you can kite it to death like any other mob. There are two main ways to kite a Rook. The first way is to wait for it to finish its charge and then attack it. You can get two attacks safely, but I recommend starting off with one so you'll be able to get enough distance to dodge its next charge. It always charges in sets of twos, so keeping that in mind will be helpful. 
Before it starts up another set of charges, it'll stamp its foot and ready itself, during which you can strike it another time if you're close enough. The second way to kite a rook is to wait for it to leash back to its spawn point after it moves too far. You'll be able to get off two attacks while it harmlessly hops back. Make sure to lead it outside of its maximum range again so it'll attempt to hop back to its spawn point again after its second charge. Rinse and repeat until dead. Easy as 1, 2, 3. Rooks drop 2 gears when killed. As you can see, clockworks can be tricky to kill. If kiting is not your thing, you can always use hired followers like pigs to do your dirty work. But if you're like me, and like to get your hands dirty, fighting clockworks can be a fun way to pass the time and get yourself those all important gears. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching and don't starve.